RBS Business Research Academy welcomes to you in the lecture number 4. In this lecture number 4, we are going to understand about the research paper in which the a two stage approach has been applied. Two stage approach is basically co is a combination of the structural equation modeling and the artificial neural network. So this is a wonderful paper paper in which the uh, all the detail about the two stage model including the structural equation modeling and the artificial neural network is written in a perfect way. So that's why I have chosen to discuss this research paper in this video. Although several other uh, research papers are also there like this is a research paper uh, that is about the understanding the determinants of online pharmacy of adoption and as two stage neural network analysis approach and then another research paper is about the uh, understanding the predicting quality of determinants of the e government again that is also a two stage regression neural uh, network model has been applied in this one and lastly this is another research paper predicting the determinants of online learning adoption during the covid 19 a two stage hybrid neural network model so here you are finding the different words are there like here a hybrid same approach and here as two stage regression neural network and then you are looking here two stage a uh, same neural network approach so uh, the the words may be different but basically the concept is same the concept is that about the so let us to understand this research paper and uh, how the results have been reported in the research paper before but before this one my name is dr raimbak sumro and i am working as a professor asia of the university pakistan so these are some of the links are there uh, if you want to contact with me then through these links you can contact me so this is the first part of this research paper that is about the introduction and then if we come down then this is a background of the study and in this introduction basically the innovative theory resistance theory irt has been applied in this one and then the research question is what what are the effects of the demographic perceived novelty and IRT on the consumer's resistance towards the MWALT? And then uh, this is a background where the gap background has been provided uh, like the existing MWALT studies. So different studies which are available on this M valid studies. And then if you come down this uh, innovation resistance theory. Uh, this is basically the theoretical background perceived novelty and then this is a research model and the hypothesis so here this is our research model where the demographic irt and external variable these are the uh, major uh, three our uh, combinations are there demographic includes age education and income irt includes usage behavior value barrier risk barrier tradition barrier and image different barriers are there which are which have been mentioned in this model and last is a perceived novelty so now these are all are the predictors are independent variable and this mobile wallet resistance is basically it is a, a dependent variable this is the research model and then these are hypotheses are there now for example there are the eight one two three four five six seven eight nine so there are the nine path are there this one path the arrow is coming from the age and uh, towards the mobile wallet there is another one path so there are the ninth path so there uh, that means the ninth path means that there should be the nine hypothesis for each path there is should be a separate hypothesis so now you're looking at hypothesis one age has a negative effect on uh m -world. so now this age now uh, here it is proposed that the age has a negative effect on the mobile uh, uh means that and then education then income and then huge barrier is a is a positive so now we are talking about the barriers different barriers are there and here looking these are demographic profile is there the respondents profile of the respondents uh, like uh, hypothesis number seven again another hypothesis and then if we come down then the hypothesis eight and the hypothesis fifth and then uh, here is an hypothesis nine so now there are to total uh, nine uh, path are there and total nine hypothesis are there and then uh, here it is a methodology that means how the research was carried out so if we talk about the probability now here you see that the non-sampling non-probability sampling has been applied 
in this research paper. So normally we uh, prefer the uh, probability sampling, but see, uh, this is a star journal. Even though in this one it has accepted with the research paper with the with the data uh, were collected through the uh, non-probability sampling and uh, where the judgment sampling was applied, and then uh, questionnaire was. Uh, questionnaire were administrated among the respondent uh, at the four states. So now the data were collected through the mal intercept technique. That means the uh, data collectors they were standing at the entrance uh, of the mal or anywhere inside the mal to collect the data from the respondents. And then uh, these are the measures. Now in these measures, basically the five point Likert scale was used from the respondents. Uh, to minimize the respondent frustration level and boost response rate because the uh, seven point Likert scale uh, are long and, con and can confuse the respondents. So now along with one, the reference has been attached to this one. So now, now they have used the five point Likert scale and they have justified the use of the five point Likert scale. Whatever you are applying, even though in this research paper, and normal probability sampling has been uh, applied and through the judgmental sampling the data were collected but even though they have justified that's enough so whatever uh, because uh, in the social science we are dealing with the in exit science are uh, here there are some of the uh, rule of thumbs are there so if you're justifying your uh, choice uh, of any technique choice of uh, data uh, uh, choice of the uh, data collection so now it's enough here, the sample size of 478 has surpassed through the suggested minimum sample size of the one, uh, one obtained from the G-Power. So, G-Power software has been applied to, uh, to get the minimum, uh, minimum sample size. Okay. And then, uh, come down. So, here this is our model. So, this model is, is this a structural model. That means, it's the result results are there. So, all are now. All these are the independent variable and they want to check the impact of on the dependent variable. Mobile wallet is a dependent variable. So this is the age, education, income. Uh, these are the one indicator, single indicator uh, construct and these are the multiple uh, indicator constructs. And then uh, this is uh, here. Here that's a very important for our understanding. So now the age uh, uh, impact of the age on dependent variable is a uh, not supported. So if anyone is not supported, then we have to not to uh, bring that results for the AN analysis. Uh, artificial neural network that non supported, yeah, non significant hypothesis are result we have not to carry. So, but we have we can carry the education because it's supported and the usage barrier, value barrier, risk barrier, tradition barrier, image, all these we can uh we say, uh, carry forward for the application of the ANN analysis. And last, perceived novelty because these are supported and just three we will leave here. And then uh, this is our model, and in this model, you are looking all these are our independent variable and this our dependent variable and these are our uh, hidden layers so now this is the uh, input layer output layer and these are our hidden layer or we can call is a black box approach okay and then if we talk about the uh, uh, common variance a uh, common method biasness now what is this basically common method biasness is normally prevalent in the studies where the data are for the both independent and dependent variable. So now here all these are the dependent variable and this is the dependent variable uh, are obtained from the same person in the same measurement context using the same item context and the similar item characteristics. So now when everything is same, so now we have to uh, explore the common method by sense because you are looking here the data were collected a uh, same questionnaire or uh, even the scale, 5 point scale was used to collect the data from the independent variable, uh, for the independent variable and for the dependent variable. Even the respondents are also same from the, um, uh, as from a mall. So that means almost several the things are same. So that's why we have to apply the common bias, common method bias. So here they have used the Harman single factor so, although it's a very old, now uh, uh, we can use the word absolute, this has been absolute and so many criticism is there on the Harman 
uh, single factor. So, uh, instead of forming, applying the, this uh, Hormin single factor, it's not good if they apply the CF marker approach. Or certain other new tools have also been developed to check the CMB. Okay, and now uh, uh, here, yeah, looking uh, very important. Yeah. So now the application of the two stage same PLS A and N approach would complement each other because the same, same PLS is suitable for hypothesis testing of the linear relationship, but cannot capture the non-linearity of the relationship. So now, already in my previous videos, I informed you that the same PLS in N, A, N, N. These are complementing each other. These are not competing with each other. Because one is, uh, 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 okay, they can check the hypothesis, linear hypothesis, and other cannot check the hypothesis. They, other cannot test the hypothesis. So that's why they are completing each other. While the A and can detect the non-linear relationship, so it is suitable hypothesis testing because of its black box operations. So here this is a black box because because we do not know what software is doing with the hidden uh, layers. So that's why we call the black box operation. And then measurement model. So now so that is also very important because. Uh, we have to check our model is that uh, is the measurement uh, our, our model is good or not. Basically, we are testing here the validity and reliability of our model. So, different tools are there to check their validity and reliability. So, in this one, hypothesis were testing were carried out through the smart PLS 3 uh, with the bootstrap of the 5000 random samples. So, 5000 is suggested uh, there's a good and the no sign change setting. One tail test was uh, one tail test was applied with a significance level of the 0.05 or alternative we can say 95%. And then we evaluated the reliability and validity of the constraints. Seven table number seven. So now reliability and validity are available. So we have to find okay. This is the same uh, table number seven, but okay. So uh yeah, come down. Okay, table seven. Okay, there is a path analysis. I, I do not know why they have given the path analysis. Okay, and then table seven indicate the or that the uh, bar alpha uh, reliability are larger than 0.7. So now that's good thing. They miss uh, almost all the uh, 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 they miss a uh, alpha and uh, like the CR and the bar alpha, their level their values are higher than 0.7. That means that uh, we can say that our reliability has been established. Henceforth, we confirm that the, our measurement model has a high degree of the construct reliability. So that's good. That means our reliability has been confirmed. And uh, for the rest of things, for from the perspective of the conversion reliability, the magnitude of the average uh, AVE now is above 0.5. So that's good thing. Again, another our buyer has been made. Uh, and then if you come down from the above measure, uh, uh, there is a zigzag validity point at uh, table 4. If we go over the table 4, we have to find table 6. Okay, this is a table 4. So here you are looking at the values of the Kronba alpha. They are all are above the 0.7 and the uh, uh, RO and CR also their values are above 0 0.7. And then AVE 0.65, uh, 0 0.5, uh, uh, higher than 0 0.5. That's good thing in R squares. So uh, from this point of view, uh, and then okay, uh, in the appendix, G shows appendix G shows the except except for the HTMT ratios among usage risk and the tradition barriers which are slightly more than point now. Other HTMT ratios are less than point nine. So almost there from the validity point of view, heterotrait, monotrait, that means HTMT values are also within the range except one or two. And then the, the majority of the results, they are uh, have been shown in the uh, appendix H. Okay. So now we talk about the, okay, multivariate and multivariate statistical assumptions. To perform the multivariate, several prerequisites need to be fulfilled from the perspective of the linearity. Table 3, let me suggest uh, table 3. Okay, table three, why is there in the table three, table four, table four? Okay, table three. So now these are linearity relationships. So now the linearity has been established because uh, all the if a test is significant. 
and uh, then we move down okay so now uh, to assess a multicollinearity so all the vi intolerance are within the range that's good thing to assess homocytosity we inspected standard residual scatter plot and notice that the the residuals are dispersed around the diagonal line that's good the homocytosity is verified okay to check the normality they have used a solmo colmo solmo uh, k is test now the k is test is a significant it means that the data is non normal when the data is non normal now what we have to do that the, because of the non normality of the distribution the various based structural equation modeling same of the partial least square period is was adopted because it is robust against the non normal distribution compared to the covariance space so the justification has been given here that the why they chose the PL is partial least square instead of the covariance based structural equation modeling the only reason is that the data was non normally distributed that's why they use uh, are they implied the PLS through the software of the smart PLS? Okay, and then uh, come here a structural model a relationship in significant if the lower upper boundaries are 95% and do not include the zero. So, if we talk about the uh, structural model table 7, table 8, and this is the table 7. So, now those which are in the uh, in this. Uh, yellow color these are supported and rest are these are not supported and okay gee, now we are coming down especially on our uh, important thing that's about the NN because we are interested to know about the ANN uh, artificial neuron network in the following stage we took the significant factors of the PLS same PLS path analysis is an input for the NA. So it means that we have to take those uh, factors, those hypotheses which are only significant. It is clear here. Among distribution for applying AN are non-normal distribution and the existence of non-normal, non-linear relationship among the exogenous, that means the uh, 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 independent variable and the endogenous dependent variable. In addition, ANN is a robust against the noise outlier and smart uh, simple size. In my previous lectures, I also discussed about that the smart PLS, uh, like sorry, that the AN is a very much robust against the noise outlier. It, even the uh, size is smart, simple size is there. And then ANN analysis was implemented using the IBM species neural network model. So in the IBM species, there is a uh, one uh, uh, means option is available through which you can apply and it is called the uh, network module, neural network model. ANN algorithm can capture the linear and non-linear relationship and does not need normal distribution. So AN does not need the not, uh, normal distribution, what if the algorithm is there? And then algorithm can learn through the training process to predict the outcomes of the analysis using the feed forward backward pro propagation FFBP al uh, algorithm. So there is algorithm uh, feed forward backward propagation. And then multi layer perception and simon activation functions were used in the uh, in is input and hidden layers. So now and the concept of all these were are discussed in my previous videos. Through the several number of the rounds of the learning process, the errors can be minimized and the accuracy of the prediction can be further improved because it's working on the multi layer. So, at least 10 layers you have to compute, even though the uh, 15 to 20 layers have been also uh, computed in the different uh, receptacles, but majority of the research that they advise to have the at least 10. And then we allocated 90% sample for the training procedure and the remaining part is uh, remaining of the sample were used for the testing procedure. That means here the ratio is a 9 and 1. Normally the research that they are following the 7 and 3 are 70% or 30% but they have used 90% uh, and the 10%. So now these two criteria are there. Either you can use uh, uh, 90 and 10 percent criteria criterion are 70 percent are in 30 percent criterion and then to, uh, to avoid the possibility of the overfitting we engage 10 4 cross variating procedure and obtain the root mean square that means they uh, basically applied the a a a n n 10 times in order to 
ऑफ रेंज रूट मीन स्क्वायर एरर लेस देन पॉइंट वन टेबल एट पर्टीन एवरेज आर एम सी वैल्यूज ट्रेनिंग एंड एस्टिमेशन प्रोसीजर रिलेटिवली स्मॉल पॉइंट वन टू पॉइंट जीरो एट टेबल एट वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट द टेबल एट टेबल नाइन ओके दिस इज अवर टेबल एट हेयर यू लुकिंग दिस इज द आर एम सी सो ऑल दीज वैल्यूज आर ऑफ द आर एम एस सी आर देयर सो हेयर यू लुकिंग पॉइंट वन पॉइंट वन ऑलमोस्ट ऑल आर द पॉइंट वन एंड दिस इज द ट्रेनिंग एंड दिस आर एम एस सी इज फॉर द टेस्टिंग so we have the two uh, that means the groups one is for training and another is for the testing okay and then this is the sse square sum of sum square of the errors and this is the rm root mean square of the errors so how we can take the uh, rmse that means so we have to divide the value of the sec for its uh, uh, that means the uh, uh your sample size that means seventy uh, percent it may be or ninety percent may be so now this is the ninety uh, percent so our out of the total uh, sample size the ninety percent uh, values are here and just ten uh, percent values you are looking here at the they are available in the n and then in SSE the same way is there to calculate the RMSC to divide the SSC with the uh, In our sample size, you will get this number. So total sample size is the four hundred eighty-four. To measure the strength of predictive power of the each of the input neurons, we conducted sensitivity analysis to obtain the normalized importance of them. Now here, table nine. This is our table nine sensitivity analysis. From the now you are looking here, the ten times A N N has been applied, and for the every uh, the missile layer. 10 layer for every layer the results are given so these are our independent variables so are there now we have to basically the main crux of this one that we have to identify which independent variable is much important so from this point of view ub is a much important because its value is a hundred percent so normalized importance of the ub is hundred percent next is a pn and then next is a db and then uh, rb And then is a I N. So these are the most important. Of course, the first one is U B. So that's the basically crux of this A N model. That where uh, we have to find out the uh, the the value of the independent variable or predictor from the importance point of view. That means which indicator from the model or from the independent variable is the most important for us. So for this study, for this dependent variable, uh, the V uh, U B is more important. Now U B. So now we have to go on the model. This is our model. So here U B usage barrier is most important. Uh, independent variable are predictor for the predicted are our for our dependent variable. So this is actually. The results of the in this way we have to report the results of the smart TDS in the A N N. So whenever you want to apply this two-stage approach, this is a wonderful paper which will guide you how you can re report the results of the uh, structural equation modeling as well as the how you can report the results of the uh, A N N and also. The different tools which you have applied, how to justify all those tools through this uh, paper. This paper can guide you a lot in this regard. And further, uh, if you come down, these are uh, uh, this is our uh, items. Their sources are there, and uh, this is the HTMP ratio is there, and this is the HTMP configure interval results are given. So if you look at here, so almost the same thing are here in this one. Structural equation modeling, and then neural network is there, which is written here. And then here, looking the, in this study, multi-layer perception technique and for neural network was using through a species version 23, and a ratio of the 90-10 was used. And then the same Simon was applied for activation function of the both hidden and output layer of the NNA 10-4 cross validation. So now you here in this is another way through which. You can report your results, and then this is also this paper will also guide you, and the as as well as this paper can also guide. So these four papers are there for your uh, guidance. That how you can report the results of the uh, A N N 
as well as the strictly equation model. So thank you very much for watching this uh, video. By the way, uh, I will keep a link of all these research paper. I will uh, keep. Uh, I have kept uh, below this video from where you can download uh, these research papers uh, without any problem. So at the end again, thank you very much for watching this video. And if you like this video, please subscribe my channel and uh, like my videos and if possible leave a comment on my uh, uh, video thank you